We want to take a look at phasers and phaser forms for vectors. We're going to call this uh, part one. We'll do a few other parts. Uh, this applies to uh, sinusoidal conditions for some parameter, and usually t is the parameter time that we're going to have behaving in a sinusoidal way. So uh, you can imagine this vector E representing the, uh, the uh, electric field of an electromagnetic wave. And it would be a function of position and time. And in terms of a phaser, we would say that that is equal to the real part of a phaser form of that vector, E to the I omega T. So this represents the real vector, the common real vectors we use all the time. And this represents the phaser, or you can look at this as being a complex vector. And we take the real part of that to get the real vector. And the little notation that we'll use here is that we'll put a subscript P to indicate the phaser form of the real vector. There's a uh, brief but good discussion of this in this book, Numerical Techniques in Electromagnetics by Matthew S-A-D-I-K-U. In case you want to uh, look into it. There's, of course, other books too. The advantage of this phaser form is this. If we take the partial of this phaser form here, E sub P of R, E to the I omega T, you notice there's no T parameter in here, no T behave in there. Taking a the partial with respect to T, we'll just get I omega and then we get back the, the original. E P E T the I omega T. And if we can we can take a look at real Max, Maxwell's equations, this column represents using the real vectors, and this comp column represents using the phaser form, so the B, the D, and the E, and the H have a sub P on it. And when you get down to the curl V is equal to the minus partial of B with respect to T telling us a changing magnetic field produces an electric field, uh, we'll wind up with minus I omega partial B P with respect to T. And similarly with the curl of H, it'll be the current density J plus I omega partial of dp with respect to t. So that, that's an example of how they would look in, in Maxwell's equations. And again, the advantage of having this form is when you take the partial with respect to t, you get back the original with the factor i omega out in front. One of the things that we'll need is Euler's formula. I hope I spelled it right. If not, Paul Moser will let me know. E to the I theta is equal to cosine of theta plus I sine theta. It's a well-known relation and we're going to use that. So if we come over here now, we're going to say this is the equation for the electric field as a function of position and time. It's going to have an X component and it's going to have a Y component. It has the time behavior of omega T and the wave is propagating in the z direction with a propagation uh, factor of k. We don't have to worry about the details on that. It's the omega t that we're really interested in. And the question is, how do we find the phaser form of this vector? Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the y component here. And by using the trig identity, we'll convert that over to a cosine. So we have a cosine of omega t minus kz. Now we're going to have the cosine of omega t minus kz minus pi over 2. That, that, will, that step, although not really necessary, it will make it a little easier in comparison to the way we handle the x component. So let's start with the x component. We have 100 times the cosine of omega t minus kz. Now we can easily write that as the real part of everything that's in these square brackets. The 100 cosine omega t minus kz 
and we can put in I times 100 sine of omega t minus kz. Because when we take the real part of that, we get back what we had. Now we can use Euler's formula to rewrite this as 100 times the real part of e to the i omega t minus kz. And that we can rewrite again as 100 times the real part. We'll go through here and we have e to the minus i kz and e to the i omega t and it's the e to the i omega t that we want to get. So we're getting this in a form that will allow us to write out the phasor form for, for this vector. We're part way there now. The y component, remember we re wrote it as a cosine. So we can do the same thing we did with, this, with the x component. So with the y component now, we can write that as the real part of 400 times the cosine. And I put a little squiggly in here to indicate it's the omega t minus kz minus pi over 2. Then we can add the 400i sine of, the, of this quantity. And again, you can see if you take the real part of that, you get what you started with. Now we can uh, reorganize things here by using the uh, Euler formula. So using the Euler formula, we would have e to the i omega t minus kz minus pi over 2. We can work this out into these factors, and I rearrange it a little bit. So here's the e to the minus ikz. Here's the e, e to the minus pi over 2. And then the e to the i omega t. And again, this is something that we want to get. Now if we look at the e to the minus pi over 2, we can use Euler's formula again. And if we substitute in, we will find out that e to the minus i pi over 2 is going to give us a minus minus i. So we can combine these now, the x component and the y component, and we can say our vector that we started out with is equal to the real part of what we found for the x component. And we're going to factor out the e to the i omega t out of both the x and the y component. So it's over here. And here's the uh, 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 the y component now with uh, with a minus i which came from from that. So the general form of what we're looking at is this. You can see that comparing this the general form with what we actually have, you can see that the phasor form of our vector is going to be everything in the parentheses here. So it's the 100 e to the minus i k z x minus 400 i e to the minus i k z of y. We can factor out the e to the minus i k z. And so we can write the phasor form of our real vector this way and um, you can see it, it is a, a complex uh, quantity. So this phasor form is a complex uh, vector. So that, there are the steps that we went through. What we'll do in part two is we'll start with this and show how you work to this. So this is the end of part one.